This is the same building, the same sanctuary that was bombed. We say that the history of the church is a part of his story, mm. and that's the story of God's love, mercy, and grace. Mm. With 21 years behind the pulpit, Pastor Arthur Price Jr. is the longest serving pastor of the 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama. What does this 60th anniversary year mean for you and the congregation? It means that we have a state of resiliency. We know in 1963 that the Ku Klux Klan bombed this church, four girls lost their lives, but yet in spite of all of that, the church is still thriving. The bomb placed outdoors beneath church steps took the lives of 14-year-olds Addie Mae Collins, Cynthia Wesley, Carol Robertson, and 11-year-old Denise McNair, who are getting ready for service inside the women's lounge in the basement. I understand, Joyce, that you were getting ready to go to the service that day? Yes, that's correct. What happened? My father received a phone call from my aunt. She called to tell us that the church had been bombed. Denise McNear was a family member. Her mother and my father were first cousins. Oh, so she was your little cousin? Yes. How old were you? I was uh, 12 years old. Did you ever question, what if I would have been with my cousin at the time? We just knew that God was in control and it was going to be made right at some point in time. Behind this wall is where the women's restroom used to be. Church members Joyce Holloway and Armin Bragg reflect on their journeys while guiding visitors through the tour ministry. What is it inside of you that said, you know what, I'm going to stay here? I replaced fear with courage. Nobody was going to run me away. And if I had to endure bombing again, I would go through that. How old were you when that happened? I was 18 years old. So I had dropped my sister off here at Sunday school, and I went on to work. It wasn't until 2 o'clock that I heard, witnessed police patrols in the streets. I turned on the radio to see what was happening. I immediately rushed home, and my dad told me that he had talked to my sister. She was still at the church here talking to the FBI. Did you come to the scene? Uh, later on that evening, I did. Do you remember what you saw and how you felt? Well, I saw the big gaping hole in the wall. There's not an adjective to describe how bad I felt. I was in shock. How did you find a resolution in there somewhere in yourself? Well, I guess it's just like a sore on your arm, a leg. Over time, it heals. Beyond the tragedy of the four girls lost, there is another critical part to this story. A fifth little girl in the lounge that day survived. It started out as another beautiful, ordinary day. What do you remember about that morning? How old were you? I was 12 years old. We walked to church that Sunday. But they were going to have a youth day program, and we was going to sing in the choir. It took decades for Sarah Collins Rudolph to speak publicly about what she endured and the loss of her older sister, Addie. When Denise McNair walked over to Addie, and she said, Addie, tie my sash. So she reached her hand out to tie the sash, and I heard this loud noise, boom. And all I could do was say, Jesus. Eddie, 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 but she didn't answer. There's a statue in Birmingham. It all revolves around what you remember. They put them up because of what I sing in the restroom. As a child, was it hard trying to move forward? I was in a very nervous condition and so fearful because when they remodeled the church in June 1964, I just couldn't go in there anymore. Is there a day that goes by that you don't think about what happened? No, I think about it every day because they had to remove my right eye. And when I look in the mirror at it, I just think about it, you know, just what happened. What would you tell that little girl? We got to live on. We just can't die in our minds and our hearts and, and stay there. We got to get up and keep on moving. What message do you want to leave people with? Hope that out of tragedy comes triumph. That in spite of chaos and confusion, Courage does prevail. Uh, Supreme Court Justice Katanji Brown Jackson will give the keynote address today at 16th Street Baptist Church at this morning's event marking the 60th anniversary. Sarah Collins Rudolph is expected to be there. She doesn't like to go there, but she does when, when in moments like this. I um, mean, while she says that she has forgiveness in her heart for the men brought to justice decades 
after the bombing. She also wants restitution. Mm -hmm. It has been a very long and expensive road with numerous surgeries. I talked to her at length, and so if you would like to hear more of Sarah's story, there's so much more to her story about what she endured. Um, we put all of our conversation, we put an extended conversation at 10.30 this morning Eastern. It'll be streaming on Today All Day channel on Peacock or your smart TV. So if you're saying, okay, Chanel, I don't understand that. How do yeah. I go there? Take out your cell phone, go to your computer, just type in today.com slash all day and it'll pop up. So um, I, I, I am forever changed yeah. by that conversation. It, um, you know, it's, it was an amazing story. I yeah. spent some time at the church years ago. And what a lot of folks don't realize is, well, that was tragic in so many ways. It also arguably helped change the civil rights movement. Absolutely. Yep. When people saw that, and people heard about that, and they read that in the newspaper, people started thinking, oh, my God. Four enough little girls. Is enough. They attacked yeah. four little girls in church. Yeah. yeah. Well, I remember because in, in, in 1963, I was in third grade, and in, in our Catholic in our Catholic church, they the the, the minister, the uh, priest, talked about that. And mm. It was really the first time in our church where they were talking about. Yeah. That. I think around it, the country, yeah. it was like little girls. Yeah. When you that's that was the the I mean, we'd have been talking about it, it'd been part of the ministry, but that was I think the the straw that broke the camel's back in a sense. Yeah. That brought, it, brought it home for people. Absolutely. I'll leave you with this. There there was a picture in her living room of the four little girls and it looked like they were kind of clapping their hands and she says now as an adult she looks up at that picture because for decades she just didn't want to talk about it she said now she looks up at that picture and she feels like they're up in heaven clapping for her like thank you for saying what really happened yes. that day so thank you all of you guys for talking there in Birmingham to me yeah, that day that was just beautiful thank you we needed that thank you and we'll be right back Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.